So we're just going to continue with our series from last week, or the whole series that we're going to have for this December. It's about gift, right? So last week we have, we, we have a message last week about the gift. So and throughout the, this month of December, we're going to talk about the gift. Okay, you're going to hear every Sunday about the gift, gift and gift, okay? All right, so it says here in our, uh, in our uh, text about the gift, receive God's gift and discover your purpose. Okay, receive God's gift and dis let's discover our purpose. Amen. So once we receive the God, uh, God's gift to us, then that's the time we're going to discover the purpose that we have in life. Amen. Amen. So just a recap, okay? Just a recap from last week. Before we start, okay? Let's read our uh, Bible verse. Please open up your Bible to Matthew 2, 9 to 11. And I encourage everyone to please stand up. Let's read the word of the Lord. If you have your Bible, you can read from your Bible. It's a short one. Let's all read. And we have it here. Matthew 9, Matthew chapter 2, verse 9 to 11. Let's all read. After this interview, the wise men went their way, and the star they had seen in the east guided them to Bethlehem. It went ahead of them and stopped over the place where the child was. When they saw the star, they were filled with joy. They entered the house and saw the child with his mother Mary, and they bowed down and worshipped him. They they stopped open. Then they, then they opened their treasure chest and gave him gifts of gold, frankincense, and beer. And let's bow our head, bow our God. Father God in heaven, Lord Jesus, we glorify and we worship you, O God Jesus. Lord, today, let your gift to us, Lord, your gift of word to us, to each one of us, your gift of revelation to each one of us, be upon us, O God Jesus. Let our hearts be open to your words. Let our ears be open to your uh, to your words today, O oh God Jesus, and let uh, today, O oh God Jesus, we are victorious because we are we have you, Lord Jesus. And thank you, Father. All this, O oh God, all the gift that we are receiving from you, O oh God, we give back the glory to you, Lord, in the name of Jesus. And everybody say, Amen. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Okay. All right. So again, we're gonna talk about you know we're gonna sing again Christmas song. Okay. Last last Sunday we. We sang a Christmas song in English and Tagalog, okay? But this time, uh, when I'm doing this uh, introduction, I said I can't find, I don't, I'm not familiar with some of the song in English, so please bear with me for Margaret and Victoria, please bear with me. We're going to sing a song in Tagalog, it's called A Christmas Song, uh, it has something about our uh, word for today, and some of, some of them, so this is about a Christmas song, okay? So I encourage everyone to please sing with me. Okay, we're gonna sing Ang Pasko ay sumapit. Okay? Last Sunday we sang five songs in English and then Tagalog, English, Tagalog, right? So today we're gonna sing Ang Pasko ay sumapit. It means the Christmas is here, right? It's coming, okay? The Christmas is coming. That's in English, okay? Good to sing. That's it. Start. Ang Pasko ay sumapit, tayo ay mamagsiyawit. May tatlong aking nagsitalaw At ang bawat isa ay nagsipagandog ng tanging alam Okay, that's all, okay? So we sang a Christmas uh, song That song in English is speaking about There's three kings who visited Jesus okay, So that's that song So I can finally uh, I'm not familiar with uh, Next year Next year I'll send some song, okay? So today we're gonna talk about as, as as we said last week. Okay, in that song, it says there is a song that don't have it. Okay. Hey, that don't have it. Okay. There's three kings who visited Jesus on that song. Okay. But let's read this one again. Okay. If you're gonna look at your Bible, if you have your Bible, I don't have it there. If you have your Bible, look at in the whole chapter chapter two. The whole chapter of chapter 2, if you have your Bible, it says here the title, Visitors from the East. Okay, I'm just going to read this one. From verse 1 of chapter 2, it says here, G 
Jesus was born in Bethlehem in Judea during the reign of King Herod. About that time, some wise men. Right? Some wise men. So I'd just like to emphasize here that what we know before is that they are not kings. Okay? They are not kings. They are wise men who visited Jesus. Okay? Who offered the king. Okay? They are the wise men. Maybe it became traditional to become wise men because it says on Isaiah chapter 60 that uh, the king visited uh, their offerings. The one that we read in our scripture reading in Isaiah 60 verse 3, verse 6, it says there that the king visited and offered some gift of gold and frankincense. Right? In 60, Isaiah 60 verse 6. Okay? So I said, yeah. So just like to clarify in each one of us, okay, that who visited Jesus, who offered the gift, is not kings. There were wise men. Okay? They were the magis from the east. Okay? He didn't also say here what part of the east. If some say some say that it's made from uh, Persia. Okay. Okay. Uh, from uh, uh, Arab, Arab 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 states. Okay. Arab states of those area. So there's nothing written in the Bible about they're saying as their kings. Okay, but we know there's three kings. Okay, so uh, uh, inform everyone that they are, they were wise men. They were the magis. In Tagalog, sila yung mga pantas. Okay, they are the scientists. Kaano na mga stars and other uh, other mga scientists. Okay, mga pantas. Okay, in short, they were the scientists in English. Tagalog mga pantas, mga mga astronomers or some of them in that those times are doing magic. They're doing magic or other stuff. Okay? So, as I said, we don't know them. Okay? And we don't know their name. Do you know their name? We know their name, right? What's their name? What's, what's the name of the three wise men? Of the wise men? Melchor, Gaspar, Balthazar. Again, that's what we know of, but there's no name for the three wise men, right? There's no name for the wise men. It didn't say in the Bible about those. Well, those are the traditions that we have, okay? During the 6th uh, century, 6th BC century, those are the traditions that, because they believe that these wise men came from south, uh, from the east side, okay? So they believe they came from Arab, one came from uh, Persia, okay? So that's why they believe that they were kings, okay? That's what we know. Right? But they were, they were wise men. Amen? Okay, they were wise men. So it's not Gaspar, <laughs> Baltasar, and Melchor. Okay? It's not like that. Okay? That's what, that's what, you know, that's what we know before. Okay? So just to give you an uh, idea about them. So also, they don't belong in a major scene. Do you agree? Most of the major scene we're seeing right now in, some, in, uh, in Google's, there's the major Jesus, uh, Joseph, Mary, the, the the animals, and then there's three kings offering the the gift. Okay, but they were not in the manger. Okay, they were not in the manger. If you get a read your Bible in the whole chapter two, let's read from. Okay, it says here. Let's read from chapter nine, uh, verse nine. Okay, of chapter two. It says here. After this interview, the wise men went their way. <coughs> And the star they had seen in the east guided them to Bethlehem. It went ahead of them and stopped over the place where the child was. When they saw the, track, the star, they were filled with joy and they entered the house. They entered the house. Okay, so it didn't say that they entered a barn or they went into a manger. Okay? They entered into the barn. They entered into the house. And to give you notes about this, if you notice reading the whole chapter, uh, uh, chapter 2, you're going to know this. King Herod, okay, during that time, he asked the three kings, okay, he asked the three kings, uh, or he, he told to slaughter the old boys, two, uh, two years old and under. Okay, so during that time, we believe that Jesus is not already in the manger, but they already moved in the house. Okay, they already moved in the house. So during that time, in our, in our, um, I think no? Uh, in our what we know before that there were three kings okay and another one we're not sure if there's three how many of them is it three just a guess 
how many visited Jesus during that time? Okay. Traditionally, we know that there's three kings. Okay, because of the three gifts that they offered, because of the gold, frankincense, and myrrh. That's why we think that okay, there's three wise men, or before there's three kings, and then or three wise men. But again, it even says in the Bible how many of them. If they're going to travel from east, of course they have some kind. There's they have some sort of um, some help. Okay, they're not gonna travel from that far. Maybe it's about 800 to 900 miles. Uh, from the east to Bethlehem, so they're not going to travel that time alone, okay? And they were magis, so pretty sure they have some helper or supporters, okay? But it didn't say here how many of them, so we don't know how many of them, but it just said here, the wise men, okay? So that's what we know, that's what, oh, hold on, okay. now we know, okay? So they're not king, okay? <coughs> they were wise men, but we don't know if it's three. There might be more, okay? Just to give you a, some, uh, information about it. Okay. As, as I've said, though, it says here in verse, in chapter 2, that uh, Jesus, maybe during that time, the king, the wise men visited Jesus were already between 1 to 2 years old. Okay? Because during that time, that's the time <coughs> King Herod asked them, in verse 7, then Herod called for a private meeting with the wise men. And he learned from them the time when the star First, the star first appeared. So during that time, he asked the king, king Herod asked the wise men, "What's the time? What's the statistics? Okay, so what's the age they're thinking? Okay, because King Herod is King uh, Herod the Great, so he doesn't want anybody to become greater than him. Okay, so he 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 said uh, he said to he said here that he said yeah he said his uh. Uh, to slaughter the kids two years and, and under. Okay? So, now we know something about the, uh, the wise men. Amen? So, just a recap with our last week message. It's about unexpected gift. Okay? As I've said, throughout this month, we're going to talk about there's a word gift in our word today. And our word for today is about the three that, that, that the, three, okay, the wise men who returned the gift. Okay? So, or who gave the gift. So, our topic for today, our title of the message for today is Give Return. Okay? Give Return. Okay. So, last week, as I've said, what have you already received some unexpected gift? Of you? Okay. Wow. <laughs> who else? Who else received physically? Okay, just a gift from your family, from your parents. Wow, praise God. Okay, who else received an, an, an unaccepted gift? Who else? Unexpected. Unexpected gift. Like a bonus. Who received unexpected gift? Who received? Wow, praise God. Today. Today, wow, blessing, praise God. And actually, not only today, that day too. That day. Last week, you received unexpected gift, right? So, who else? It's a blessing, right? If you, ha you haven't received your unexpected gift, that's why it's called unexpected. You're not expecting it. Amen? Amen. Praise God. It's just like to, uh, uh, with about unexpected gift, it's just like to praise God for what He's doing in our church. I believe, you know, don't be discouraged about our numbers right now. I believe we're all Christians. Amen? We're all Christian. As the Bible says in Matthew, we're the salt and the light of the world, right? And if it's raining, the salt get melted, right? So, you know. All right. So, last week, okay, unexpected gift. I believe that in our church, we are blessed. We are blessed with talents of uh, people. Uh, and we are blessed, okay? Unexpectedly, we're looking for, for uh, uh, right now, we have a uh, dance ministry, right? have a dance ministry. So I asked one of our church people uh, who went to church here before uh, to from the other church, three believers, and I asked him, bro, could you help us to start with our dance ministry? Okay? Would you help us? And he, and he said, yeah, sure. Immediately he said, sure, I will help you. We will help you. Okay? We will help you. But unexpectedly, unexpectedly, okay, I didn't know that uh, we have someone here from our youth that already know how to do the tambourine unexpectedly. 
So I said to I said to my wife, we not in love. We don't know. It's already inside the house. Uh, unexpected, right? And unexpectedly, we we're not expecting the youth right now to become more active than you know than before. Unexpected. And we we don't expect with our tithes and offerings that we we're that we you know that your tithes and offerings in this church, in our church, your support, your help, your your giving to uh, your tithes and offerings, we're not expecting it. Okay? Praise God. Amen? So today we're gonna we're gonna talk about gift return. Okay. We're gonna talk about the gift return. So it says here <coughs> it says here in Matthew two verse eleven. I don't know if we have it there. It says there, when they saw the star, they were filled with joy. They entered the house and saw the child with his mother, Mary, and they bowed down and worshipped. And they bowed down and worshipped. Verse 11, then they opened their treasure chest and gave him gift of gold, frankincense, and beer. Now question. We have a brother here who has a newborn and a newborn kid here, okay? Question is why the, the wise men gave the gold, frankincense, and the mirror? Right? If you're the parents of that time, do you think the gold, oh, of course, gold, it's okay, you know, you can sell the gold, okay? But the frankincense, what are we going to do with the frankincense? The incense. Frankincense is like the incense, okay? The incense of the gallows, okay? That's the incense, okay? And the mirror, okay? Mirror is like a strong med uh, medicinal. Uh, compound, okay? It's like a perfume close to uh, frankincense. Okay, so why they brought gold, frankincense, and mirror? As an offering, as a return, as their gift to the Lord. First, number one, gold signifies it's a precious metal. Who has gold here? Who has gold? Okay, no gold, okay? Hmm? Oh. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I didn't expect that. So I'm asking right now, who has a gold here? One of our brother here has a gold. Tagalog, <laughs> Kinto. It just came from another. Surname, his surname is Kinto. Kinto in English, gold. <laughs> So it's, it is, you're here right now, right? So Ginto. So we have a we have a gold here. <laughs> Praise God. So me, gold is a precious metals. Okay? Precious metals, you're giving the gold especially as a word of saying that you are, uh, you are worthy of this. And the gold are offering to the kings. Okay? If you remember those times, you know, you're offering golds, silvers, but mostly gold is precious, uh, precious metals. Okay? And that signifies that God is the king. God is king. What? The wise men offered the gold because they signify Lord Jesus, even though he's, he's still a baby. You are Lord. You are king. You are royalty. Okay? They, they emphasize it on their gift. Okay? Next, frankincense. Frankincense. Frankincense signifies. Okay, the incense, okay, the incense. During those times, the Old Testament, what, that's what they're using, okay? The incense, they're used in prayers, in worship. Before they, before they, uh, they start their, their worship, they, they have to have the incense, okay? So it signifies Jesus as the chief priest, as it says in Hebrews, okay? Jesus is the chief priest, the chief priest, okay? The chief uh, intercessor to all of us, amen? Do you remember what Pastor Herman says about Jesus is the chief priest and the chief intercessor to all of us? Amen? Next, mirror. Okay, mirror is like a, a pure, it says here, a strong, medis, a strong medicine. It's like a perfume. Okay? So it's like a strong medicine. Pastor Herman uh, told this as like a strong narcotic. Okay? Strong narcotic, strong medicine, a perfume used maybe use, could be used in involvement. And during that time, the, the wise man also signifies that, acknowledging that Jesus is suffering and death. 
Okay. So how does the wise man know about all of this? Oh. If they came from a side, let's say Persia, which is Iran, I would say it's Iran right now. If it's Iran right now, right? Persia during that time, Prophet Daniel is the chief uh, chief overseer during that time. Okay, and during the book of Prophet Daniel, he wrote about the book in the book, and this. Uh, Magis, these wise men were from that area and could, and they're reading the books of the prophets. And those are the times that those prophets, these wise men already know, okay, there's someone's coming. Okay, there's someone's coming. Okay, and if you see, if you look at in verse 2, it says here, Jesus was born in Bethlehem in Judea during the reign of King Herod. About that time, some wise men from eastern lands arrived in Jerusalem asking, where is the newborn king of the Jews? Okay. Then the wise man says, we saw his star. We saw his star. That's why there's a star of Bethlehem. Okay. That's why there's a star of Bethlehem, star of David. Okay, so during that time, that's why these three wise men knows about it. Because they, for, uh, if they are scientists, if they are the, uh, the scientists or the modern scientists right now, they're studying okay, the stars, what's going on, what's going to happen, what will be the weather for tomorrow, or what's going to be the blessing or what's going to happen, right? There were the scientists. If you're going to look at Daniel 9, 24, verse 27, that's what it says there, okay? All right. So that's for the gift that they offered. This gives some speculative principal items used in researching. As we said, those magis, okay, they're the ones that scientists like right now, right? The scientists right now, they have, they believe in scientific scientific uh, explanation. Okay? What happened to the universe, there should be a scientific explanation. During that time, these magis, those magis or the wise men, have the scientific uh, scientific uh, explanation. That's why they studied the star and they saw, oh, this star is bigger. Okay, And during, they're studying the, the, the book of the prophet, then they found out that there's a star coming. Okay? There will be a savior who's coming. So this wise man signifies as I said, they offer their uh, uh, what what they have, okay? The gold, the in, the incense, and the I believe that those types of materials that or those types of materials that they gave offered to Jesus is what they're using in their wizardry, okay? That's what they're using. However, it signifies the wise men hand over gave to Jesus, okay? They return that gift. They return those stuff to Jesus. And they, in, in that case, they demonstrating that they were no longer, okay, or not going to practice wizardry. They surrender everything to the Lord. Lord is the one that we're using, okay? This is the one that we're using. Aside from offering as God, as King, as uh, those things, but they offering what they have in their self. They're letting go of the past because they have found a new star. And Jesus is the new star in their studies. Okay, so imagine if the scientists right now they're studying right now. No? Uh, I like the Discovery Channel. Okay? I like the those uh, planets, planets, planets. No? Uh, they they discover a new planet. Okay, they call it as who knows 2.0, or they call it as Earth 2.0. Okay, they study that. They said some of the scientists, okay, astrologists, uh, astronomers, astrologists, or something. No? They said that this is similarly like an Earth, okay? Earth 2.0. There's a name, I forget what's the name. So during the time, these wise men are studying the skies, and they found out that there's a star that's different from all the stars. And that star is the stars of Jesus. His stars. Amen? So they, didn't, they let go of what they have because they have found a new star, which is God. Amen? <clears throat> so, in our message for today about the gift return, the Magi, as we said, they are the wise men. Number one, they read and believe in God's word. Okay, they read the book of the prophet. Okay, and they believe in God's word that it's gonna happen. Number two, they search for Jesus. Imagine if they're from the east. They must, they must travel for, as I said, like 800 to 900 miles. So they really search for Jesus. Okay. 
It's not only they're giving the gift, but they really search for Jesus. How about us now? Are we searching for Jesus? Are we giving everything to Jesus? Number three, they recognize the worth of Christ. That's why they're offering this kind of gift. Lord, you are Lord. Though that this gift are not enough and cannot be enough, whatever gift we have to the Lord won't be enough for what He has done for all of us. Imagine, while we're still sinners, He died at the cross. Right? While we're still sinners, He died at the cross to all of us, for you and me. Number four, the wise men humbled themselves to worship God. You know the word worship? The word worship comes from worship. Okay? So that's why when we have our worship ser uh, uh, service during the morning, in your, worship, in your worship time, in your house, in your prayer time, you're giving what's the word of God into your life. Lord, it's you. Okay? You are worth of this. Okay? If we're coming to this church, we come to our worship service, Lord, this is you. You are worth. We worship you. I surrender to you. That's your worth. Okay? In our giving, Lord, this is your worth. Okay? I believe there's a, it's almost the end of the year, but we haven't, I haven't uh, talked about uh, I have not have a message about the tithes and offering. But I believe today, before the end of the year, this this message also speaks about our giving, which, as I've said, praise God for the giving, your <coughs> cheerful giving for the Lord. Okay? We know that there's a 10%, 10%, as I said in Malachi. But in 2 Corinthians, it says there, give cheerfully. Okay? Give cheerfully. What's the word of the Lord, what He has done for our life? Lord, you are more, you are worth 10%, Lord. Okay. I'm not saying this again to ask your money. Okay, I'm not saying this to ask your money, but to bless you. Okay. Philippians 4, 17. And number 5 says here, the wise men obeyed God rather than men. Right? They obeyed God rather than men. The wise men. If you're going to read here in verse 12, when it was time to leave, okay, they returned to their own country by another route. For God had warned them in a dream not to return to Herod. Okay, because Herod says here in verse 8, it says here, When you find him, okay, when you find Jesus, when you find him, come back and tell me so that I can go and worship him too. So that's what King Herod said to them, but it's, it's, it's different from what he's planning to do baby Jesus. Okay? So the wise men obeyed God, okay? They obeyed God rather than obeying king. So imagine this. If those wise men were king, that's what we're thinking of, what we talk about, why those kings are going to follow orders from the king as well, as well, right? By the way, those wise men obeyed God rather than man. In our situation right now, in our situation, sometimes Instead of obeying man, let's obey what's God's voice in our life. Okay? What his plan in your life. What his what he told you today, obey him rather than man. Amen? And here King Herod has a different plan to kill Jesus, but God knows about it. So he warned them when it was time to leave, they returned to their own country by another rock. For God had warned them in a dream not to return to Herod. Amen? So those are those are the wise men. So like the wise men did, how about us? If it pertains to give return. Give return. So the first one is unexpected give. And this one, as we could see this one, they're returning their gift. And in our life right now, what gift are we are we returning to God? Or are we giving to God? What's the best gift that we could give to God? Our time? Our arts? Hearts, prayers, our worship, our tithes and offerings. Okay? And those are the best. You know what's the best? The best is yourself. Ourself. Amen? Uh, wow. I think this is the, the, the fastest message or the quickest message again. Last week I checked the net, I checked in Facebook and checked in YouTube. Usually it's around. around 60 minutes. Last week, it was only 48 minutes. I think today it's going to be only less than 30 minutes. Or maybe 30 minutes. We're almost done. 
You know what? With our message for today, gift return, it's simply Lord is asking to us, each one of us, right now, what the best gift that we're able, what best gift that we could give to Him. How we examine ourselves. Sometimes, you know, during this time of Christmas, we're so busy, what gift am I going to give to, to my brother? Okay? What gift am I going to my wife? Okay? What gift am I going to, to my brothers and sisters? Okay? To my family? Okay? So, what gift? We're so busy. But how we ask ourselves, Lord, how we ask, how we ask ourselves, Lord, what gift am I going to give you this Christmas or this, this year? Every year we're asking, we're looking for best gift that we could give to our wife, to our family, to our children. But how about to God? What's the best gift that we could return to Him? Or what He has done in our life? What's the best? As we said, ourselves. Amen? Ourselves. Yes, of course, we need... Don't get me wrong that, okay, we don't need your money. I mean, we don't need, we don't need your tithes and offerings. We don't need your service here. We don't need your time. We need all of them. But God is asking everyone of us, looking for ourselves. Give everything to the Lord, yourself, 100%. Just like to give a, uh, a story about a professor, a professor, an old professor, the old professor, he has a student who has a newborn. Okay, he was a newborn, newborn son. Okay, a newborn son. So what he did, he wrote a book. Okay, this book. Okay, he wrote a book. Okay, and then he gave it. He wrapped it nicely, put a ribbon, and he gave it to 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 the son of his student. So this is what happened. So the son, when the, when the the parents of that uh, son opened the gift, okay, they said, oh, the book. It's old book. It's only a book. But that book is not, it's not book alone. Right? It is a special book. That book is an old book of Shakespeare's. Imagine that. Who loves Shakespeare's here? Shakespeare. See? When you have collections, that time that must be a collection of that professor. That book that he gave. So he didn't give the book. His gift is not the book. You know what his gift? Himself. Because that his life, that his collection, that his okay, precious. Treasure That is fresh that is precious uh, possession. possession. Right? So his gift is not the book but his life, because his life is on that book. Imagine, what is the best possession that you have right now? What's the best possession that you have? A uh, house and land, a uh, car, a uh, savings, uh, a job. What's the best you have right now? If, you're a, if, if that best possession you're going to give to somebody, you're not giving that thing. You're giving your life to them. Because that, that's you. That's your precious possession already. Amen. And in us, if we give what the best in us, ourselves to God, that's our best gift to the Lord. Amen. It's not about it's not only about our time, our sacrifices. Okay, but it is ourselves. This year, before the end of the year, and next year, we have some. Usually during the first year of January, we have some New Year's <coughs> resolution. New Year's recollection. New Year's resolution, okay? We have a New Year's resolution. Could we have, a, could we have each one of us have a, re, a resolution in our, in the next year that, Lord, this time I'm going to give the best to you. I'm going to give my best time to you. Okay? I'm going to give my best service to you. Okay? I'm going to give my best to you, Lord. If we're going to think about when Jesus was, Jesus, what, what he has done in our life, saving us at the cross, having eternal life, there's no gift that we could return to God that is enough or could fit or could pay for what He has done. He bought us for a high, high price and no price could pay for it. It is His grace to all, to all of us. Amen? And as a sample of a precious gift, as you remember, uh, one of the, in the in New Testament, one of the ladies there, 
uh, Mary who offered the perfume for the perfume to Jesus. When he offered the perfume to Jesus, he gave what's the best in her. Okay, maybe she used it. Okay, she that's what she's using it to you know it smells good to you know to attract some of the men. But that's her life. That's her possession, and she gave it and she poured it to the Lord. And the disciple says, "What? Why you are you why are you pouring it to, to Jesus?" And Jesus said, "Let her alone. Let her alone." She did it because for my for my beauty. Amen. So in our word for today, gift return, what is the best gift that we could return to God? Simply ourselves. Amen. It is ourselves that we could return. Sometimes we get so busy at the start of December by looking for other gifts. But it's God is only looking for ourselves to offer to Him. Right? And it, it, if we're offering ourselves, it includes our time, the best time, the best service, okay? the best offering that we could give to God, the best in us. Amen? Let's bow our head. Father God in heaven, Lord Jesus, today I believe, O oh God Jesus, that you spoke to each one of us about the best gift that we could give to your God. Lord, there are times in our life, God Jesus, that we're forgetting about you, oh God, in our life, especially this, uh, during this Christmas, this holiday season, oh God, this Christmas season. Lord, teach us, oh God Jesus, and remind us and reveal to us, Lord Jesus, about what we have done at the cross, that we're able to worship you, oh God Jesus, that we're able to freely worship you, oh God, to give what's worth for you, oh God. As our God, as our King, as our Lord, not only the 50% of what we have of our time, talents, and treasure, O oh God, but the best that we could give to you, O oh God. Father, Lord, thank you, Lord, God, Jesus, for my brother and sister, O oh God. And today, Lord, for your word today, reminding us that we're not kept busy with this, in this holiday season, but Lord, let us have time Talk to you, Lord Jesus, about what's the best gift that we could ever give to you, Lord. And thank you, Father, Lord, for your word today to all of us. In the name of Jesus, everybody say, amen. amen and amen. Amen. So, that's our word for today about the gift return.